Hello, everyone. Welcome to our service of morning prayer from the Book of Alternative Service for Canada. Today is Sunday, September 5th. It is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. And today we bring our prayers and intentions for those around the world who are suffering. We also lift up those who work and who labor in the fields of, of our country in various and sundry fields. We, uh, on this Labor Day weekend in Canada. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. God, you will not despise. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion unto our God, that he will richly pardon. If we say we have no sin, we, re we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. And we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall, shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God rules over all the earth. Oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken his voice. Today our psalms is Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. From this time on and forevermore, for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous may not stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their heart. 
but those who turn aside to their own crooked ways. The Lord will lead away with, with evil doing. Peace be unto Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, 8 and 9, and 22 and 23. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and despoils and despoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. St. James, the brother of, of Jesus, writes these words. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? Or if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person is dirty in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act and so act as those who who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over justice. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace and keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of it? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God.
Now the Jubilati dance. Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And there Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an, had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at him. Now the woman was a gentleman of Seraphonician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dog. She, but she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. When he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Capitol, they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears. And he spat and touched his tongue, and looked up to heaven, and sighed and said to him, Ephrathah, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one. The more he ordered them, the more zealous they proclaimed. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee. Okay. So friends, I speak in the name of God the Father who has created us, God the Son who has redeemed us, and God the Holy Spirit who continues to uphold and strengthen us each and every day. Amen. Through our gospel reading for today, St. Mark makes us witnesses Two events which demonstrate how the relationship, relationship which Jesus has with those around him serve as examples to us in our own roles as partners and builders of God's kingdom in the world. We are his partners. And, he, and builders on his behalf of the kingdom of God in our world today. The first event involves a Seraphonician woman in the region of Tyre and Sidon who begs Jesus to cast out a demon from her daughter. The second event 
involves a group of friends from Decapolis who bring their deaf mute friend to Jesus to beg for a cure. Scholars tell us that these are the first recorded miracles of healing performed by Jesus in Gentile territory. That's pretty significant. They demonstrate, I think, the inclusiveness, the inclusive nature of the kingdom of God, the kingdom which Jesus himself came to build for all eternity. St. Mark wants us to see the difference between the life of promise and hope offered through Jesus the Christ and the chaotic, hard-hearted realities offered by the political, cultural, and religious systems of the world. Both Mark and Jesus underscore their rejection of the powerful and the well-connected who do only that which benefits themselves, let alone engaging uh, himself. Well, let's say this. It, it benefits themselves, their friends, and their way of life. I think, again, it's important. Jesus rejects those who would act for their own benefit, or the benefit of those who they are associated with, or for the benefit of their way of life over and above anyone else. Here was a woman and a Gentile, a non-Jew, probably Greek, who according to both Jewish law and Jewish tradition, had no business going even near Jesus, let alone engaging him in, a, in, in, in some kind of spirited debate. When the woman approached Jesus and bowed at his feet, she came seeking relief from an unclean spirit controlling her young daughter. He initially refused by way of a riddle-like statement. First, he said, let the children eat all that they want. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dog. In other words, I've come to save the Jews. They are the ones who claim to be followers of the one true God. And that's where I should first put my time and my effort. Why should I waste my efforts, my energies, and my powers on someone like you? I think that the woman's uh, response was kind of cheap. She reminded Jesus that even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In a region where there were significant populations of both Jews and Gentiles, all non-Jews would have been considered less than the dogs, which roam the street. Jesus, however, was so impressed with the woman's response and her, mis her, her mis uh, unmistakable faith that he immediately cured her young daughter. In the second part of our gospel narrative, after a trek through Gentile territory, Jesus travels to the territory of the capital, encounters a man with hearing and speech impediments brought by a group of friends who beg Jesus to lay hands on him. Mark tells us, after he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Atatata, meaning be open. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. 
friends, in, in performing these two miracles, two signs of God's power and authority in the world, Jesus again challenges the established order. Only people, uh, and I should say men, declared righteous by Jewish officials to do such things in the name. First of all, a man who was deaf and dumb would be considered unclean and unrighteous as a result of his affliction. In addition, he was a Gentile, and therefore under Jewish law, there was no hope of him ever being worthy of God's love and mercy and affection. Jesus didn't try to change the man. He didn't try to make him into anything that he was not. He didn't try to rob him of his, uh, of his culture, of his language, of his identity. He had pity. You know, no self-respecting, law-abiding Jew would ever soil himself by touching someone who is unclean for fear of being considered unclean and unrighteous himself. But a defiant Jesus, however, puts his fingers right in the man's hand. Puts some spittle on his finger and touch the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he commanded the affliction to be gone. Though Mark doesn't really tell us much about these folks. It seems that Jesus takes the Seraphonician mother's wisdom to heart. He also clearly shows that even people who are not considered God's chosen ones are worthy of receiving God's mercy and blessing. They are precious in God's sight as well. They too can be children of the living. While Mark doesn't tell us much about the man who was healed other than he was a deaf mute, we do know that the faith of his friend was enough to bring about his healing. God's love and mercy and grace is available to everyone who chooses faith in him, especially those who ask on behalf of others. Well, Mark doesn't really go into a lot of detail. It's very clear that the faith of friends is very, very When we read Mark, learn, and inwardly digest the word of God, everything we say, do, or think will be influenced by our love for God and our recognition of God's love for us. Clearly, when we recognize the power of the living God in our lives and in our world, miracles happen and healing abound. We know that the powers that be in first century Palestine expected people to blindly follow the rules even when they went against God's law. Hopefully we are not that way. But James, the brother of Jesus, reminds us that judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And faith by itself, if it has no words, is dead. The Seraphonician woman plainly understood that even when something is lawful, it doesn't make it right. And her example of persistence has benefited more than just one little bit. Even her so-called insignificance in the world really stands 
her worthy. She stands worthy in the sight of God. She may be insignificant to those in under Jewish law, but to God, she is precious. She has faith in Jesus the Christ, in his life, his death, his resurrection, and example. And that is what makes us right with God, even when the world sees us or sees others as irrelevant or insignificant. I think we need to apply that same rule uh, in our consideration of, of the residential school. Uh, issue within Canada today. Righteousness, power, and authority does not give you righteousness. It is through the love and grace and mercy of God and, and being marinated in His rule. We have all been richly rewarded because of the examples of the Seraphonician woman and the friends of the man in the capital who was here. My prayer today uh, for each of us as fellow pilgrims in this unruly topsy turvy world is that we too will demonstrate the same love, determination, and faith shown by those unlikely believers almost 2,000 years ago. Each of us is called to have faith in him who loves the unlovable, who makes the deaf hear, the mute to speak, and the blind to see. The one who drives out all that is evil and replaces it with that which is good, wholesome, and righteous. Friends, today and every day, let us all pledge to exercise our faith in the building of God's kingdom in this world and the world to come for all eternity. This we ask in Jesus' name, our Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. Amen. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, honor, dominion, and glory on this day and forevermore. Amen. So friends, we have heard the word of God open to us through the scriptures. Let us now affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So today we pray for the church, we pray for those in authority, and especially uh, those who have put up their names uh, in this country, in Canada, for, uh, for election to the uh, parliament, Canada. We pray for the world around us, especially those places that are experiencing turmoil and hardship today. We pray for those who, uh, who are suffering from, from uh, bad weather and uh, from, uh, from uh, fires and uh, earthquakes. We pray for those who, who suffer because of political and economic turmoil. We pray for those who are who are uh, affected by climate change, both across Canada and around the world. 
pray for those in need, for our local community, and for those who have departed this life in our faith, in faith and faith. Let us pray with confidence to our, our Lord saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service and prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts, prejudice and selfishness, and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your great praise, that all may share the good things that you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy and skill to the healing of those who are sick in body, mind, or state. Especially today, do we pray for all those who, who are fighting the COVID-19 pandemic and those who in our society keep our society going during this worldwide pandemic. And especially in our prayers today, do we pray for those as unworthy as we are who've asked us to pray for them. We pray for Steve and Jane and Danny, for Anne, for Harry, for Paul, for Lawrence, for Julie, for Eunice and Jenny, for Ethel and Tom, for Everett, for Jesse and John, for Peggy and Blake and Lois, uh, Louise and Mary, for Donnie and Joyce, for Clifford and Michael, for Libby, for Dana, for Helen, for Lois and David, for Carol and Alice, for Mike and Jenna, for Ed, for Laudia, for Velma, and for Chelsea. We pray also for anyone else known to us or unknown who are in need of God's healing and care. Strengthen all who give their energy and skill to the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are done, and your comfort to those who mourn. May you give rest to all those known to us or unknown who have died in faith, in the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now the collect for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the, of the whole of creation, for the beauty of the world, 
for the wonder of life and for the mystery of life. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us in every spot. We thank you for setting our us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisf satisfy and delight. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience, by which he overcame temptation, for his dying, through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. So as we bring our own thoughts and intentions and cares to God through our prayers, let us bring together those prayers as we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Friends, may the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of making us what pleases him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be the glory forever. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst us and remain with us forevermore.